You understand that? Right. Now, why did they cut off their hair? Because in Isaiah, it says what? The most I shall cut with a, with a scalp the women of Zion. They don't have to cut. It's just gone. They don't have to shave off and then buy a wig. But again, these things might be an embarrassment to us, but the most I left these things on us. So in the last days, people would know, well, those are the Israelites. Those are the children of Israel. We've been put in the lowest state. You understand? The sicknesses that we have. You know, think about it. If you, if you have any disease on this planet, who gets it worse? We do. The most I tells you that in Deuteronomy 28. You understand? He's identifying us. That's why he said he left these things on us for a sign. Read right. on. Verse, eight. Verse 19. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. And one that shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have, that have familiar spirit, unto wizard that speak, and to mortal. Should not the people seek unto their God? Right. For the, Dead. For the living to death? Yeah, that's what that, and that's what's going to come in these last days. People are going to lose faith in the Most High. They're going to go to, you know, astrologists and palm readers and, and even their, their clergy in their church. You understand? Everything outside of the Most High. Everything, because that's, what is that? That's darkness. They peep. They mutter. You understand? They're trying to find out what's going on, but not understand that all what? All things come from the Most High. That's why it says what? Isaiah 8 and 20? Uh, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Right. Read that again, my brother. That's important. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Right, so whatever comes to you with, whatever they come to you with, this knowledge of, you know, this is what's new and all of that. This is how we beat the virus. This is how we do that. This is how we escape. Like how Ben was saying, that, you know, you ain't gonna pick up no arms to talk about you taking this man down. That's right. So when people come to you with that, that's darkness. So the most I said to the law, to the testimony. What law? The law in the Bible. Nothing changed. Right? Anybody comes to you, they must come with light. But what is light? That's the question. What what is that light? They said the, the Mosai's law is that light. So you have to seek to that. You have to know that. Give me um, Proverbs chapter six, verse twenty-three. Proverbs chapter six, verse twenty-three. People are gonna come with all kind of things, and guess what? If you read this Bible good enough, you know that it says that some shall be fooled. Some of the wisest shall be fooled. So don't just think that because oh I know this and that, you're good. Understand that it all goes back to the law. The way that the Most High has this, this place being destroyed is lawful because it's full of sinners. Understand? Proverbs 6 23. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. What, what does a lamp do? It shows the way, it gives you light. What else does it say? And the law is light. The, the law is what? Light. The law is what? Light. Light. So you need, you need instructions, you need directions, you know where to, where to go, what to do. The law is going to show you that because the law is light. But it says what? The commandment is a lamp. It's going to show you what to do and what not to do to, to please the Most High. Read on. And reproof of instruction or the way of light. And that's what you get from the commandments from the laws. Reproof to correct your own self, to correct your own bad behavior and establish the behavior that the Most High will accept. So you have to understand that the law is light, okay? Sometimes you might be in the light, but this darkness seeps in. That's why you go back to the law. You might be questioning things. Can I do that? You know, party is going to tell you no, first of all, right? But then another party is like, maybe, right? You go back to that law, answers all the questions. That's the light. What does the scripture say? The whole world shall be in darkness. So you're walking amongst those who are in darkness. They have dark tendencies, dark ways. They, they do things secretly. You understand? So the more you talk to them, they're going to try to bring you into their darkness. But you got to stay in that law. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. You know, Satan's trying to take with him everybody as much as he can, making you sin. But Psalm 78 and 5. But you got to go back to that law. 
to uh, establish the Most High as your sanctuary, as your habitation. Psalm 78 and 5. Read from the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. And appointed a law in Israel. It didn't say he appointed a law in Ishmael, in Egypt, or anybody else. He appointed a law where? In Israel, amongst the Israelites. You understand that? We just read last week the laws of uncleanness, what kind of foods you can't eat and can't eat. You understand? Most I said if it's from the ocean, it has to have fins and scales. You can't be a bottom feeder. You're not supposed to eat, you know, all of these nasty things that they call delicacies now. Okay, they want to eat snails, they want to eat crabs, they want to eat shrimp, and all of these things, and making it feel like, oh, I'm such a high level because I eat these. No, you're nasty. You're, you're nasty. Okay? And your insides are nasty. That's why we, they get diseases and all of that from that. Okay? Same thing with the swine. Very, very, very important thing you got to understand about the swine. The swine is not made to be consumed. The swine is a, is a not a human, is an is a, is a organic um, vacuum cleaner. Understand that the, the swine, the pig to be short, does not have pores on his body. Only one place is a pore in a pig, that's in his hoof. Where's that hoof? In all that mud, in all that muck. So he cannot get rid of waste, like how you sweat and I sweat. When we sweat, when we perspire, we are getting rid of waste. Mm -hmm. That's why when some people sweat, they smell like I don't know what. Mm -hmm. They got too much waste. Mm -hmm. if, if an alcoholic sweats, you smell nothing but alcohol, right? right, right, right. The body's ridding itself of toxins. Mm -hmm. of, of, I hate to say feces, but honestly, your, your, your body can get to the level where it's ex 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 excreting toxins from your skin. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Uh -huh. That's when you're really diseased on the inside. Yeah. Okay, so now understand that you're made that way. When you sweat in your head, on your, your skin, your whatever, mm -hmm. okay? You're getting rid of toxins. You're getting rid of uh, ref refuse of your body that your body doesn't want. Right. Um, again, going back to the pig, it's not made like that. It's, your skin doesn't have no pores on it. Mm -hmm. What happens when you take a hot shower? Your pores oh, open. open yeah. Exactly. And you get rid of more toxins, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you take a hot shower, don't, don't go right and spray, spray no perfume on yourself. That wouldn't be a pleasurable experience. Right? <laughs> Don't get your cologne right after you come out of shh. <laughs> Not gonna feel too good because your pores are wide open. Right, Anybody right. ever experienced that? Right. That shows you how your body is made. The most high is a genius. Mm. He's amazing. Okay, he made you to be self-sufficient. Mm. Your body does so many things that you're on, you're totally unaware of. Mm. You understand? But that's why we celebrate the most high. We make him our sanctuary, our habitation, and we fear nothing else but him. Right. You understand? Because we are, all like scripture gracious. says, perfectly made because of him who is perfect in all things. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So let's go to the book of Psalms 78 and 5. Read that again. Read it from the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Make them known to their children. He established a law in Israel, and that law was supposed to be passed down from, from parents to children, and so forth, and so on, and so on, right? Why do we have so much hypertension in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and amongst our people? Because they eat swine. Mm -hmm. That's the number one reason. Swine is very salty. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long you cook that thing. And when you're cooking it, it stinks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it gives you hypertension because all of that stuff they can't get rid of goes into you, no matter how long you cook that thing. And sometimes you gotta cook the, the, the hem hog, whatever you wanna call them. What do you call them things? Hem hocks. Hem hocks, I can't even talk, I can't even say. You gotta cook that thing for 17 hours, right? And it stink up the whole house, and guess what? After you done cook that thing in your house, it stank, you still got disease in it. Mm -hmm. yep. It's still not pure, it's still not clean, you're not supposed to eat that, right. okay? Right. If you recall, the brother was saying last week that the animals that the Most High told us to eat, they're made a certain way. They're basically uh, they're herbiv herbivorous. Okay, they, they only eat, like I said, it's chew the cud, chew the grass, chew the greenery. Some of them might eat fruits and so forth and berries, but they don't eat other animals. So we're like omnivores now, right? We are, we eat, we're herbivores, we're also um, carnivores. We eat, we eat vegetation and we eat meat, clean, clean. So that's called an omnivore, okay? We eat both, 
but we don't eat, eat unclean meats. Right. Everybody understand that? Right. All right. Now let's continue on verse 6. Verse 6. That the generation to come might know them. Right. Very important. That the generation to come might know them. That's important. You pass that down. It becomes a tradition. In the beginning, the law was passed down. How? Orally. It wasn't written down necessarily until the time of Moses when we were in the wilderness. Then the Most High, he first wrote down the law for us with his own thinking. You understand? So then when we were sinning and Moses came down from the mount, he threw that up at, that, at us, right? And then the, Mo, the Most High had it written out again. You understand that? Okay, so now read verse 6 again. Verse 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Right, read on. Verse 7. That they might set their hope in the Most High. And that's the whole point, that they might set their hope in the Most High, have something to hope in, and to see that the Most High is all-powerful, and that's why you hope in Him. Not in a piece of wood, not in a building. You ain't got to go do all of this foolishness when you walk about. No, that's foolishness. Mm -hmm. You understand? What does that do for you? Nothing. Where did the Most High set to do that? Read. And not forget the works of the Most High, but keep His commandments. But keep His commandments. But what does it say in verse 6? Verse 8? Verse 8. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. And guess what we are? A stubborn and rebellious generation. You tell your your your, your grandmother, your mother, your parents, no, stop eating pork. It's no good for you. What are, what are they? Stubborn and rebellious. They're going to tell you, I've been eating this thing all my life and I ain't going to stop it. I drop that. <laughs> But before you drop dead, you're going to be having all kind of pains and all, all kind of things wrong with you, right? Mm -hmm. Read on. A generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast in the most, with the Most High. So the Most High said, don't be like that, man. Do His law. Learn His law. Pass on His law. Find ways to make it a part of your daily life. Okay, let's go from there to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Because see, the Most High's law is wisdom. It, the Most High's law is, is, is that true light that man has been searching for. The secrets of the universe is in the Most High's law. The secrets of the earth is in the Most High's law. The secret on the best way to keep your body, on how to um, be strong, how to remember some of some of the men that um, that were dealing with the law and dealing with the Most High, when they died, they did not die decrepit. Moses, when he died, he died strong. He wasn't falling apart. He wasn't walking with a cane talking about, Aaron, help me. No. <laughs> he wasn't doing none of that. You understand what I'm saying? Because they kept the dietary law and the Most High blessed them. Everybody understand that? Now you don't keep the law. What does the Most High do? He curses you. He curses you. People don't like to hear that at church. God don't curse nobody. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he tells you plain and simple. Deuteronomy chapter 28. If you do what I told you to do, you are all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to go out peacefully, come back peacefully. Your animals on your farm are going to be all right. The babies that you have going to be good, all of that. But you don't listen to me, you're going to suffer. What are we doing? We're suffering. It's simple, right? So now when you, when you learn that, then your mind, it should click in your mind, well, all I have to do is follow his law. That's right. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Read for the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy unto thy children, and and shalt and shalt take and shalt talk of them which thou sittest in thine house. Mm -hmm. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Because if you do this, then it becomes a part of the children's minds. Mm -hmm. What are they what are we doing in, in, in uh, retrospect? We talk about Christmas. Mm -hmm. we talk about Halloween. But that's in their minds. Yeah. Children are very excited when it come talk, when it comes to Christmas, right? Because yeah. you've been telling them that lie all their lives. Right. Right. You know, Santa Claus gonna come and bring you gifts and all of that, and you could sing Hallelujah for baby Jesus and all that. <laughs> they, 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 it's in their mind because you put it there. Right. We put it there in our ignorance, but now coming back to the Most High, he says what? If start again, from verse seven, six, uh, seven, 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 seven. Verse seven. Yeah. Uh, read for verse seven. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, mm -hmm. and when thou walkest by thy way, and when thou liest down, 
and when thou risest up. Verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be a frontless, uh, frontless uh, between thine eyes. So this is us practicing almost like a manual way of writing the Most High's name on our foreheads. You understand? This was the beginning of it. But anyway, the point of the matter is, it was a, a, a little housing that we put the law in, and then we would tie it on our foreheads, and just like it said here, to remind us of the law. And then we also had the strap that we used to remind us of Egypt, and what we went through in Egypt, and also the Most High's law, how we're bound to it. You understand? Mm -hmm. Very important that you understand that. So um, sometimes now when you see the people like the Will and Wall, they, they go on like this, they got this thing on their forehead, mm -hmm. that's what it's talking about. Okay? Mm -hmm. But what they do, they do a little different. They do it, they tighten it, and sometimes it, it, it breaks breaks skin and makes blood. You're not supposed to do all that. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to go that far. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the most I said, you know, have it on your head, your forehead. You know, you're supposed to have it around your house. And just general conversation. Read on. Read from the, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. 6 and 9. Um, verse 6 and 9. Uh, through 9. Oh, slightly. Uh, 6 and 9. And thou shalt write them upon the, the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Most High thy power shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards, and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. So the Most High gave us the land of milk and honey, came with wells, homes already built, all of that. Because why? When we kicked out them seven nations mightier than us, the, the, the Gerga sites and the, all them other sites, we kick all them sites out of there, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> we had it made. You understand? We had it made. And the most high, like you said, you didn't have to build them wells mm -hmm. or build those houses. I did that for you. I had the people do it. Mm -hmm. So all we had to do was what? Read on. <coughs> Verse 12. Then beware, lest thou forget the Most High. That's all we had to do. Not forget the Most High. You understand? Read on. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Verse 13. Thou shalt fear the Most High thy power, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Exactly. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. So, if you remember the Most High, you praise the Most High, you serve the Most High, you'll be blessed because that's all He wants. Mm -hmm. I mean, He brought us into the land and gave us everything, even protection. He even told the animals, don't come in there amongst them. Mm -hmm. I'm serious, okay? But prior to that, he brought the animals in to start to destroy the nation that was there. Seriously, that's how the Most High works. He sees us as being, what, precious. Precious in his sight. So he said he would ransom nations for us. He killed nations for us. You understand that? See, we never get the full value of how much we are worth to the Most High, or even worth to ourselves as a people, or as individuals. Mm -hmm. We don't get that nowadays. Why? Because our minds have been changed. You're used to what they call you on the street, the N-word, and this mm -hmm. and that, the N's and the B's. We would call ourselves that, right? Mm -hmm. The Most High didn't call us that. He calls us His people, the people that are called by His name. Mm -hmm. And all we had to do was what? Remember Him and keep His law. Read on. Verse 15. For the Lord thy power is jealous, a jealous power among you, lest the anger of the Most High thy power be kindled against thee, mm -hmm. and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. And that's exactly what happened. When the Most High said he's jealous, you got to think about that because you might use that term jealous or that word jealous and equate it with human emotions and how we react when we're jealous. You understand? Like you might see somebody trying to talk to your wife or your girl or whatever. You know, run up on them like, what's up, man? <laughs> see? But see, the Most High doesn't work like that. When the Most High does, he's going to give you a chance to do the right thing. He's going to give you a chance to back up. 
okay? You know, the Most High is, is very merciful, long-suffering and long-enduring. You understand? Yeah. But you can't expect the Most High to be like that forever. That's why I say he's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is it that he gives you a land with houses and wells and, and gold and everything that you need? Everything that you need, and you turn around and worship the gods of the people that he just kicked out? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense, right? right? But that's what we did. We started worshiping Baal and Ashtaroth and all these other so-called gods and, and God and our deities, right? What, what, what? This truck goes from the that 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 he had in store for us. What this truck does that would go off in front of that? Number one thing is prophecy. Number one. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Deuteronomy 28, real quick, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, because you know when, when our forefathers, matter of fact, um. Deuteronomy 28 and 16. Matter of fact, verse 1. Verse, read verse 1 real quick. Reading for the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the, the Most High, to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Mm -hmm. Right, but now you go to verse 15. What does it say? Verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, thy power, to observe to do all his, uh, his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee right. and overtake thee. And what happened? All these curses came upon us. And... As we go further, you're going to see what actually distracted us. But what distracted us in plain, the layman's terms, is we saw what the other nations had. That's what it is. And not that they were better than us, but they were just different from us. In the beginning, we saw that the other nations had kings. Mm -hmm. So we said, no, we want a king. Mm -hmm. And the most I said, but I'm your king. And we was like, no, we want a real king. I mean, <laughs> we want somebody we can see. <laughs> okay? We want somebody riding on a horse. So, but I'm your king, right? Then after that, we saw that the nations had um, statues, and, and they had, like, uh, their statues were made of gold. The gods, the god Dagon, Dagon, and all of these other gods, Baal, and, and Ashtaroth, and all that, right? They saw that the nations had all these things, and even though we had more than them, we were so, so uh, nosy, number one. But number two, we were so foolish. Foolish because we gave up everything for nothing and every time you read the scriptures in the history you see that we would take down a nation mm -hmm. and then when we took down the nation we pick up their little gods <laughs> <laughs> so their little gods that couldn't save them we gonna pick that up and worship does, does that make sense to you no. we did it because why we are rebellious people mm -hmm. you understand I mean think about it during the time of Moses there were men and women that had idols in their tents wow. and it made no sense because now you came from captivity or slavery into a land that's free that's all yours he's giving you land he's giving you wells he's giving you everything and the first thing that you do is take up a, an idol and worship it that idol didn't get you out of Egypt right. wow. that idol didn't you know give you security in the wilderness mm -hmm. none of that but that's how we were wow. let's, let's keep reading on Matter of fact, um, we'll come back to Deuteronomy 28, but for now, let's go to Romans 3 and 1, because the question is this. What is the profit of keeping the law? You know, the, the, does it make sense? Because, you know, some people say, well, if I eat swine and crab, I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's the point? Right? People say that. You know, and people say, oh, we've been eating this for generations, you know, and, and, and we've been going to church on Sunday for as long as I can remember, right? My grandmama did it, my mama did it, I'm going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they say. And they're like, what is the point of me going on, this, on the seventh day, mm -hmm. right? Or some people now talk about this Monday, but that's wickedness, okay? But the point of the matter is this. Your spirit, in order for it to be in tune with the Creator, you have to keep His laws. Because then you're, you're harmonious with Him. You're clean how He wants you to be clean inside. 
and outside, mentally, physically, emotionally. You understand? You're not in division. You're not all over, all over the place. You're not crazy. Okay, you're not very undecided. Why? Because you know, okay, this is, I'm dealing with the Most High. He made all things. And since he made all things, I'm all right. Because I'm doing what he said to do. Romans 3 and 1. Read from the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantages then have the Jew? Right. What profit is there of circumcision? What advantage then did the children of Judah have? Everything. Think about it. Because the other nations, they had, they had, they had their own thing. They had their law. Remember the code of Hammurabi? They had all that during the time of that time. Other nations had their laws. You see, what it is, it, at times, these nations seemed like they were profiting. They were, they, were, they were successful. They were getting bigger. They were building walls. That was a big thing back in the days. Who was building a wall, right? <laughs> Everybody said, oh, look, they're building walls over there, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it was simple. But we say, oh, they're building a wall. They're fortified. Nobody can attack us. What's, what's, what are they? How do they do that? Then you walk over there, and they worship some god named Shango. <laughs> right? So you say, well, I'm not saying I might be defending them, <laughs> blessing them, right? <laughs> but the problem is this, a couple of years down the line, the most I will say, okay, now they're fortified, they got their wall. Now, I don't want a hundred thousand of you, I just want a thousand of you Israelites marching there and kill all of them. And guess what happens? You march in there and kill all of them by the spirit of the most high. Because it's not about their idol. It's not, it's not about what they do. If they do it wrong, remember this now, very important. The Most High sent us against nations that were being wicked. Right. Your God is a righteous God, just God. When he told us to go into uh, the land of Canaan and, and take down these nations, he said what? They're worshiping idols. They're doing unseemly sexual things amongst themselves. Mm. Sons with their mothers and mothers with, the, with, the, with their brothers and all of that. You understand? Mm. So he said, no, get them out of there. So when he brought us in now, he said, this is the law. This is what I want you to do, okay, on all levels, on spiritual level, emotional level, sexual level, moral, all of that. Why? Because he wanted us to be clean. And if we had just did those things, we'd have, we would have remained in the, in the land. But those same nations that we admired, the Most High brought them against us when we defiled the land and broke his law. Everybody understand that? So in the same sense, the Most High will bring people against you and I when we defile our temple and break his law. Now it's on a personal level. You understand? Prior to that, it was a nation. It took the whole nation down. But now he's deal dealing with individuals. Everybody understand that? So when things are going wrong, check yourself to see what you're doing. But also remember, you're always going to go through trials and tribulations. Okay, so read 3 and 1 again. Read for the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there in, of circumcision? Much every way. Much every way. There's a profit. There's profit in keeping the law. You understand? There are, there are riches. There are blessings in keeping the law of the Most High. That's why it says what? Much every way. Read on, brother. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. The oracles of the Most High. The laws of the Most High. What the Most High requires of you. You understand? It was given to, it says, uh, what advantage, what advantage then have the Jew, but it was given to the whole nation. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's advantageous for us to all keep the law. Yeah. Know the law, my brother. But the verse before the first one talks about the same thing. Uh, you talking about Romans 3 and 1? Uh, uh, 229. 229. Okay, let's read that. Reading from the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 29. But he is a slap <clears throat> But he is a Jew. Which is one inwardly. Spiritually. Spiritually. Not showing off. Spiritually. In tune with the most I read on. And circumcision is that of the heart. That's a spiritual circumcision when you cut away the wickedness from within you. Okay? Not pretending, not acting like, okay, I stopped doing that, but I'm, you know, I'm still doing that on the law. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Read on. In the spirit and not in the letter. In the spirit and not in the letter. Very important. Understanding that these laws, not they're not easy to keep when you're not in your own land. You understand? Like, for example, there are some people right now that know the law. They're not supposed to work on the Shabbat. They have to work on the Shabbat. 
You, know, yeah. you understand? That's how they pay their bills. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to. But spiritually within now, they're going to have to do what? Acknowledge the Shabbat until they don't have to work on the Shabbat. Mm -hmm. A few brothers and sisters in here went through that, right? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So these are things that's going to happen to us. Read on. In the spirit and mm -hmm. not in the letter. And the letter means you're going Superman on the law and making your life super difficult. Try your best. Do your best. And when some people hear that, they say, the most I didn't say try your best, but the most I also said, what well, I'm a merciful power. Give me Matthew 9, 13 real quick. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Do you, do you not think or know that the, the most I knows what kind of condition we're in? Think about it. The foods that we eat is laced with all kind of abominations and things that we're not supposed to consume. Did we put it there? No. A lot of times we read and we get we look with our to the best of our understanding and we think things are okay, but it's not. They're coded. There's cold words in it. And then the FDA has a way of saying, if you only put a certain percentage of this, you don't have to put it on the package. That's a fact. I want you to all read that up. Yeah. Check that out. If you only put a certain percentage of whatever you put in a package, you don't have to enlist it. It doesn't have to be on the package. So sometimes when you read something and you swear it's all, it's, look, it's clean. It's not clean. It's not clean. That's why the most I said what? Matthew 9, 13? Read from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Most I said I will have mercy. And he said, go learn what that means. Because you got a lot of our people that talk about, no, you see, if you can't keep the Sabbath a little bit, don't keep it at all. That's stupid. That's right. You understand? That's like saying if you know you can't, uh, let me get a good example. There's two things when it comes to murder. There's the physical murder, right? Nobody is going to force you to murder. But what about hating your brother? That's also murder. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's also a part of the law. So you have to get to the understanding that you have to be more spiritual than carnal. Okay? Just because you're not out there killing nobody or you hating people in your minds. Nobody's going to force you to do that. You understand? So you have to get to that level where you're doing the best you can. Everybody understand that? Uh, read Romans, read uh, Matthew 9, 13 again. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Exactly. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Go back to uh, Romans 3, and you're in verse 3. Read from the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? What if some didn't believe of the blessings of the law, of keeping the law, of knowing the law? What if some didn't believe that? Read on. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Most High forbid. Most High forbid. Read verse 15. Verse 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. That's what they do. They'd rather believe that. They'd rather believe that. You understand? Then the advantage of keeping the Most High's law. And that's always been our problem. Mm -hmm. That's always been our problem since day one. Uh, from there, go to the book of uh, Romans. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Oh, my mistake. Okay. My mistake. My mistake. Romans 6 and 12. My mistake. Because there's, there's, there's a point to it. There is an advantage to keeping and knowing the law. You understand? And it's been delivered to us, and it, it should become sensible to you to know it and to keep it to the best of your ability. And also remember, there are times when you're going to be forced to break it, you're gonna you're gonna break it without knowing. You're gonna be stumbling blocks and things in your way that's gonna cause you to break the law. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. But you have to understand that you're dealing with a merciful power. Mm -hmm. Romans 6 and 12. Read for the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And that's the fight. Let not sin remain in your mortal body body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. In other words, you have to find a way not to think about things that make you sinful. Mm -hmm. Because the thought itself is sin. But the act is even worse. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to control yourself. You have to learn five methods and ways in which to not meditate on sin. You see, and that's what we do. We meditate on sin. Now we have to learn how to meditate on righteousness. And when you learn how to do that, then you're blessed. Then your whole composure is different. Mm -hmm. All right? Go to the book of um, 
Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5 and uh, the most important thing anyone should be able to tell you or should tell you is that it's not easy because sin is all around you sin comes from those that you look up to you've been taught sin by your mother and your father by your uncle and your aunts and those that you know you look up to because they didn't know any better you understand but now you coming into the light coming into the truth you should see a better way Deuteronomy chapter 4 Verse, verse 5. Read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Most High my power commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, mm -hmm. for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. This, which shall this be is your wisdom and understand it in the sight of the nations. You understand that? We're supposed to be the light, that beacon, to the nations. We're supposed to be the blessed ones, where there's no war, there's no disease, there's no tragedies amongst us as a nation of people. And the nations are supposed to look upon us and say, wow, these people are blessed, look at them. Mm -hmm. They all look healthy and bright and they're not falling apart, they don't have no disease, right? Uh -huh. But we're just the opposite because we're not keeping this law. We don't know this law. We don't really take time to learn this law. Yeah. But it says what? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom mm -hmm. and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Mm -hmm. Not that we're supposed to go to them and get their wisdom and their corrupted understanding, because that's what kills us. That's what's been killing us. Yeah. Read on. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this nation, this great nation, is a wise and understanding people. Right. When what happens? We shall hear all these statutes, meaning the laws, and and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Why? Because we got our understanding from the top, from the Most High. You understand? That's what's supposed to happen. We're supposed to be a nation of priests unto the Most High priests and judges to judge the nations not to be judged by them not to have them as priests to us we're supposed to be the priests and the judges of the earth you understand mm -hmm. because how are we going to judge by the law of the most high how do they judge how they feel how they feel like there's a constitution in the united states and every time they want to change something what they what do they do do you write another bill to change the, change the constitution? They, add, they say they add to it, but what they're actually doing is changing it and amendments, right? right? Mm -hmm. So that means that the law is not concrete. Right. And from the same constitution, you have hundreds of laws right now mm -hmm. that actually go against the constitution. Right. But it's the way that they interpret it. Well, I think when, what's, when such and such said this, I think he meant that. No, I think he meant that. Mm -hmm. And this and that and this and... Do you think one person really meant so many things about one sentence? But that's how, but that is a judicial system of this country. Okay, so now, for example, now they want to, you know, they wanted to have a homosexual marriage. Do you think the founding fathers meant that? <laughs> think about that. Right. Think about that for a minute. Right. Do you think the so-called founding fathers of this country wanted to allow men to marry each other way back then? Nah. But they interpret it, reinterpret it, different president comes in, different people in the, in the Supreme Court, right? And the different ju judicial branches. And what do they do? They just change it every day to, to uh, what? To please themselves. So now it's a law, men can get married, right? Amazing. That is amazing because the law of the land, the law of man is not like the Most High. Right. You understand? And the problem with that, it changes. It changes, every man changes, the law changes. But what is what about the Most High? Does he change? He doesn't change. The Most High doesn't change. Real quick, Malachi 3 and 6. The Most High doesn't change. Man can't, because he can't figure things out, or he's still groping around in the dark, he changes. You understand? You have to understand that you're dealing with a foundation, a solid foundation when you're dealing with the Most High. And when you're dealing with the Most High, he doesn't change. Malachi 3 and 6. 
Malachi 3 and 6, real quick. Anybody? Somebody? Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye son of Jacob are not consumed. So the Most High doesn't change. And from day one, he didn't have to change. You understand? So it's important that we understand that. Go to the book of um, Romans 7 and 1. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Like I said, man changes because he's still learning. But the Most High from the beginning understood all things. Romans 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, for that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Right. For I speak to them that know the law, that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. As long as you live, this law has dominion over you. You understand? You can't put anything before it or above it. Everybody understand that? So, don't try to find the code of Constantine and try to talk about, well, this is the way they did it in the past, this is why I'm going to do it now. No. The Mosai's law has dominion over you. That's why it regulates all things. Verse 2. For, verse 2. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. That's a law. And what does that do? It takes away... Um, inappropriate behavior. It takes away cheating, it takes away from the husband, the, the wife wanting to go outside of the marriage, which brings in uncleanness. And when you go further, it talk also, men are governed by the law also, right? A man is not supposed to deal with another man's wife. Or his fiance, right? You know, ain't supposed to be no cheating going on. You know what I'm saying? The husband goes through the front door and you go through the back and all that. <laughs> Right? <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Right. Nothing cute about it. Okay? Nothing cute about you, you know, humbling another man's wife. That's disgusting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Talk about she wanted it. <laughs> Give me a break, man. The most high is watching us. Yeah. And while in society, we might laugh about it, that, you know, yeah. another notch on my chest, so, you know, I, I hit that and all of that. Right? Yeah. That's wicked as hell, man. That's wicked as hell, because it, it creates uncleanness and it creates a wicked spirit of vibration within our our community. Remember, the Most High had it where even the act of murder, if you kill somebody by mistake, you could run to the city of refuge, right? But in doing that, not only were you not killed, but that spirit of murder wouldn't stay amongst us. So when there was a lot of murder going on like there is now, why is that? Because when you murder, you set off those spirits when we kill each other. You know, it sounds very odd. You understand? But that's the way it works. Um, read on. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Exactly. Meaning what? The Most High will bless her to be in another marriage. Everybody understand that? If, if her husband dies, the Mosai will be sympathetic enough to get her another husband. Everybody understand that? That's the way it works. But if while she's alive, she's running around and playing games, that's adultery. That's uncleanness. And what happens if you read the word carefully enough, she would get children that will be sickly. Did you, did you ever read that? Yes, yes, most I calls it adulterous children. Did the children commit adultery? No, it's the it's man and the woman that did. And Shalom Prince, all right brothers. All right, read verse three. Verse three, so then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So you see how you see how that works? If her husband be dead, she's free from that law. She doesn't have to suffer. Her husband, let's say, provided for her, or her husband 
was a breadwinner, so to say, right? If he dies or he's dead, she's free to marry somebody else. And that's clean. That's clean. Read on. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Exactly, right. But that's something that we're not supposed to abuse, okay? Uh, let's go to, to the book of John chapter 10, verse 1. John 10 and 1. Now, there's a lot of things that society pushes that it's totally against the will of the Most High. That's why within our communities, we have so many fatherless children. So this book is talking to us. You understand? And we have so much sickness that we never understand or get a, get a better understanding of why we are the way we are. And when you, when you read the book of Deut Deuteronomy 28, it explains all that to you. We are cursed as a people. And people don't like to hear that, but that's because they don't know who they are. John chapter 10, verse 1. John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but claimeth, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. That. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Exactly. So the most I say we have to do things on up and up. He that entereth not by the door into the In other words, straight up, straight forward, no sneaking around. Not talking about I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Okay? That's not in here. That's our Kelly. That's not the most high. <laughs> you see where he's at, right? <laughs> you see where he's at right now? Yeah. Okay. The most I saw something wrong with a little bump and grind. Okay? And that's something very important for us to, to understand because like I said, you know, there's a level of uh, machismo amongst men about cheating with, yeah. with women, married women. I knew this one, one, one guy that he loved to sleep with pregnant women, which is so disgusting, right? But he would humble them and talk to them. They're pregnant. And eventually he would sleep with them. You understand? But that's the level of wickedness that we are on as a nation. Do you think the Most High is going to bless him, her, or the child? No. So then when she has a child and later on all kind of things happen, she's going to wonder why. Well, what did I do? She's going to go to church. <laughs> you understand? And ask the preacher, what did I do? I love my baby. But you forgot what you did? What you were doing? The Most High doesn't forget. What did he say? He doesn't change. His law doesn't change. Okay, so in other words, if you do what the Most High said to do, you're blessed. If you don't do what he said to do, you are cursed. Cursed. Okay? In other words, he will go through anything to bless you, save you, redeem you, but he will also do anything to curse you, kill you, give you disease, if you don't do what he said. People don't understand that kind of God, that kind of creator. But that's because they look at him like a human being when he's above all that. Right. If God loved everybody, there would nobody die. Nobody would die. Nobody would be diseased. Cars wouldn't be running into people and the people flying in the air and, and, and dropping dead. You understand? But that's the way it works. Let's go from there to um, Exodus chapter 10, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. We have to make time for the most high. You know what I'm saying? Daily. Daily. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Make time in your Exodus 20 and 8. You have to make time for the most high daily. Because he is deserving. Every day that you have you spend on this earth is given to you as a gift from the most high. Exodus 20 and 8. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Go ahead. Verse 9, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. Go ahead. Verse 10. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within my gates. So, 
the reason why we're reading this is because we're talking about the law. And when you read the law and look at it seriously, ponder it, consider it, think about it. Like the scripture said, write it on your doorposts. You can have it between your eyes if you need to. Okay? Whatever you got to do. But the, the whole point about writing it on the wall is remembering it, thinking about it. That's why it says when you walk by the way, talk about it, discuss it, see the levels of the law. Because when you do that, then you're getting on the level of the Most High, which means that what? You're going to be blessed. Yes. Okay? Read on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, that in them is. Now, do me a favor, jump from there and stay in Exodus 20 and go to um, 4, Exodus 20 and 4. Okay. Thou shalt not make unto thee any unclean brick in thy Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. That's a commandment. We're not supposed to make statues. We're not supposed to make graven images of what's in heaven and then worship it or honor it or give any credence to it. The Most High is telling you this. As God, as Creator, could He not have said, well, I look like this. I'm about six feet, well, maybe seven feet. I got a long white beard. Couldn't he have said that? And just said, well, here's a picture of me. Just, just make copies. He could have said that, right? But he didn't do that. He didn't do that purposely because he wants you to have him here in your mind. You understand? In your heart. Not necessarily thinking about how he looks, but what he said to do and how he's blessed you. That's what he wants. Okay? Now, with these other idols, people make idols and statues that their God's supposed to look like, right? And what do they do? They also make little mini statues. I gotta carry, with, carry this thing with me everywhere I go. And they kiss it and all, please bless me, right? Please bless me, my God. That's dumb. <laughs> the most I said, don't do that. Go ahead, brother. Is that cross a graven image? Yes, it is. The cross is a graven image because uh, Shire Christ wasn't nailed to a cross, he was nailed to a tree. And from that they fashioned a cross. And um, a cross is really uh, an idol for the deity Tammuz. You understand? Which is the son of Nimrod. So when you see that cross, it looks like a T, right? It is a T. It's, it's for, for Tammuz, the son of Nimrod, the god of the forest. Okay, so when people, you see Christians with that on their, on their, no. That, that, that doesn't represent Christ. When you see them with the little, um, the little fish, that's another God. <laughs> that's another God. You understand? Or deity, I should say, or idol. So when you see them with all these things, these things come from mythology, but men take it to represent Christ and his journey or his walk, and it has nothing to do with him. Just because, yes, he fed many with fish, but did he say worship the fish? <laughs> did he? Okay. Uh, I don't know how many of you are saying, but I, I was under the belief that uh, some, somehow some, one person grows half of the fish and the other person grows the other half of the fish, and that's like some sort of secret message or something like that? I've never heard of that. Yeah, but I do know that name of that fish, one of the names for that fish is Dagon or Dagon, oh. the fish god. You ever read about Dagon, the fish god? And there's another word, Zepisco, whatever his name is. Right? You see, yeah, you see what it is, is that we do things on a, on a level that's, we're not thinking. We're just taking what we're given and then not realize, for example, Sunday. I mean, it's obvious, right? Sunday is <laughs> for the sun god. Rob, wow. think about that. But you tell people that, no, you, you know, you're talking that old, that old religious stuff. No, I'm not. I'm speaking truth. Okay? Read on. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou yeah. shalt not make any, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. That covers every spectrum of everything. You don't make the most out to look like a god, to look like an idol, a fish, a 
cow, uh, a snake, uh, a bird, an eagle, whatever. You don't do none of that. None of that. Not even like an angel. You understand that? Read on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to the Lord. Now the Most High is commanding you. Don't do. Don't bow down to these things. Why would you do it then? Does it make sense? Is he going to respect you and bless you for that? No. Read on. For I, the, for I, the Lord, thy God, and the jealous God, this thing, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the third and fourth generation of them that hate them. Simply meaning that when he tells you not to do these things and you turn around and do these things, he will get you later on down the line. You understand? So it says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Meaning what? The same fathers that do hateful things to the Most High that make images, that, that bow down to these images. Later on, when they come back on the earth, he gets them. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. What do you think that means? You think it means he's going to come knock on your door? Hey, I told you not to make an idol. That's not what he's doing. You come back through that womb as a little baby John and you know you look cute and all that and you think you're gonna have a good life all of a sudden you only got two you only got one arm. <laughs> okay? You have a disease, you're born with a disease, you're born blind, you're born crippled. People don't understand these things in relations to our creator or God, because they say, Well, how can God not be how can God be so merciless to, to have a child be born with AIDS? What did that child do in his former life? Because we're reading it right here. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. The Most High said, I will not punish the father for what the son has done. Then he comes back and says what? I will not punish the son for what the father has done. You understand? Same lifetime. But when that father dies and he comes back into, it comes back into the earth in the third or fourth generation, being the, the uh, grandson of the great grandson, that's that father coming back. That sinned. And how does he come back into this life? Cursed. Everybody understand that? That's what you read him. Okay? So, in other words, you can't get away from the Most High. And when the Most High said not to do something, he means not to do it. Everybody understand that? That's law. And that's lawful. All right? Now, let's leave from there and go to the book of uh, Exodus chapter. Exodus 16.23 See a lot of people don't understand the Most High or in, in not understanding His law like I said you don't understand the operation of the world because people ponder and they say well how could there be crippled people in the world if there's a God? How could there be a diseased baby if there's a God? They don't get it. They can't put it together. As a result, their faith, their faith is destroyed. Because people say, well, how can I have a faith? How can I have faith in a God that allows babies to be born blind? No arms, no legs. You understand? That's, they're speaking from lack of understanding. And some of these people have been in churches all their lives, but have never really read the book. Or never have had someone explain the book to them. Exodus 16, 23. Exodus 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today. And see. See. And see. Boil. See. Go ahead. And see that ye will see. And that which remain overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. Now this is so simple, right? It's called a Sabbath preparation. See? And the most eyes, huh? Seed means to boil. Means to boil. Right, right. Seed means to boil. So the most eyes saying, this is all I want you to do. I don't want you to work on my Shabbat day, the seventh days. What I want you to do on the day before that, I want you to make extra food. Okay, if you're going to boil something, boil something extra. So that on the Shabbat day, you don't have to cook. You don't have to work. You understand? So it's simple, but a lot of us don't do it. 
we'll find a reason on that. Yo, oh man, I got, I, I, I'm hungry. I got to get something to eat, right? <laughs> why didn't you make it the day before? Or why don't you say, okay, well, you know what? Only a couple of hours, I'm going to eat cold food, right? right? If we love our creator, why can't we make those exceptions for him? He's given us a way to do it. Make something extra, okay? And when you do that, you feel good. Yeah. Nothing wrong with not eating hot food just for a couple of hours. And it's literally a couple of hours. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't got to have, you know, hot food seven days a week. You don't. But the most I saying, if you're going to boil something, or cook something, cook extra that, that day, spot day, you can have that. Simple instructions, right? We don't follow that. But we, in order to become spiritual people, need to follow these things so that most I can what? Bless us. Okay? And so that our conscience, conscience doesn't bother us. All right? If you need to iron clothes for the, to wear on the Shabbat, iron it the day before. All right? Put an outfit together. Do what you got to do the day before. Yes, sir. I know you're not supposed to keep like the fire. Right. Is it turning on the microwave? Is awesome. Uh, same thing, bro. Same thing? Same thing on another level. Okay. Because what happens to the food when you turn on the microwave? It comes out hot, right? All right. <laughs> that's, that's the answer to that question. But that's a good question, though. Yeah, that's a very good question yeah, because... Um, the fire but that's... That's doing it on another level. You understand? But the idea is to make a sacrifice for the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Eating something cold. You know, you got these people that they have, sto the stove stays on for 24 hours, the fire burns for 24 hours. They found little ways to cheat. <laughs> you understand? But why not just make a sacrifice for the Creator of all yeah. things so that He can say, well, you know what? I saw what you did. You, you made something the night before or you ate something cold that day. I'm going to bless you for that. Now what if I come and say, you know, I don't see no fire in the microwave. Let me just, you know, press uh, two minutes. Two minutes ain't going to kill nobody. <laughs> right? <laughs> but the most I see is that. Right? So, again, we got to make a sacrifice for the creator of all things. Let's go to the book of um, Exodus I'm sorry, let's go to, uh, I don't want to keep y'all too long. So let's go to Jeremiah 17, 21. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 21. Seventeen twenty one, yes. Anybody? Yeah, you can read about it. Okay. Jeremiah seventeen verse twenty one. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day. Or bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your house on the Sabbath day, neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. Exactly. See, that's what we're supposed to do. Things that we need to get done, that are troubling us, that are like, so focused on our minds. The most I is saying, I want you to make time for me. That's basically what he's saying. You know, whatever is troubling you, that's so, your mind is full of it, don't bring that out on Saturday. Like, I shouldn't come here and say, brother, man, you know, the job is driving me crazy, man. I shouldn't do that, because then your mind is in the same place, right? And we're both cheating on the Most High. Can you cheat on God? Yes, you can. By not doing what he said to do. You understand? So we're cheating on God when we do these things. So he said something very simple. Don't bring out your burdens. You know why? Because again, you're not doing that. You're making a sacrifice. You know what's on the tip of your tongue. 
want to talk about what your boss did, what your boss said, and how you don't like the job no more, and all the people on the job driving crazy, you, right? right? All that's there, right? On the tip of your tongue. But the most I'm saying, make some time for me, man. Just keep it in the back of your head. And when the sun goes down, knock yourself out. <laughs> all right? You can talk about your boss all day, all for six days straight. You good? Yeah, yeah. You got six days straight to talk about your boss. But on the Sabbath, just chill. Make some time for me. And that's very important because now we're showing our allegiance, our devotion, and we're acknowledging the Most High. You understand? And that's important because you've got to make time for the one that created you and that continually blesses you. Right? Isaiah 58 and 13. We're not going to, it's probably the last scripture. Isaiah 58 and 13. And we're talking about the Shabbat, but in reality, this goes with all the laws. Find a way, seek a way in Babylon to keep these laws. You understand? Yep. Meditate on it. You might have to really do things that you don't fully understand. You might have to go through steps and take steps. And, you know, brothers have come and said, look, I work on a Shabbat day. Can I get, um, can I get it? Anything from you that I can bring to my boss that will give me some kind of clearance? And yeah, we've given it to them. And they, they're on it, off on a Shabbat day. Take the steps. Okay? Isaiah 58 and 13. Right? Yes. When thou criest, let thy company... Isaiah 58 and 13. sounds kind of funny but it's basically saying if you don't do certain things on the Shabbat day read it from the top again if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath of the light the holy of the Lord honorable mm. and shall honor him right read not doing thine own ways, mm. nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Right, right. That's beautiful, right? That's beautiful. It's poetic. Because you're going to call the Shabbat honorable, pleasurable. You're going to look forward forward to it. You're not going to look like, you're, gonna, you're not going to look at the Sabbath as a burden, like, ah, oh, man, I can't use a microwave, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't go to the corner store and get some tacos, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? You, you're not gonna find it as being something displeasurable. Right. You're gonna find it as being just the opposite. You're gonna find it as being, you're gonna feel good about it. Yeah. You it know what I'm saying? Fun. It should be fun. And when, when we bring food here and drinks here, we're saying, look, this is what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Let the Shabbat be something enjoyable. During the time of uh, Constantine, when Constantine uh, which was a Roman ruler, when he was trying to change the Shabbat from the seventh day to the first day, what he did was exactly what the scriptures said not to do. He made the Sabbath a burden for everybody. Okay, you can't do this, you can't do that. He added extra things to it. But what he did for his soldiers, he made the first day of the week, Sunday, a great festival. Every Sunday was a great festival. You were free, you could do anything you want to do, he'll provide extra, but see, what he was doing was the devil's work. Yeah. You understand? He made the Sabbath a burden to the, what you would call Christians at that time, who were really Israelites in Rome, okay? And what he was trying to do was to have the Christians or the Israelites stop keeping the Sabbath and go to the first day of the week, Sunday, because it was enjoyable, you understand? So, you now, like the scripture says, have to make the Sabbath pleasurable and honorable in your own mind, in your own spirit, in your own place. Like the scripture said, why don't you cook something extra the day before, right? So that you have something to eat. 
why don't you prepare your clothing the day before, iron it, put it together, so you don't have to do that on a Shabbat day and feel guilty, right? Why don't you just do whatever you need to do? Clean your house, take your garbage out, <laughs> right? Why don't you do anything that you're supposed to do <laughs> the, the, the night before, the day before, so you're okay, right? And then the Most High will look at that and say, you know what, he, he or she is doing that all for me. He's making it honorable, okay? I'm gonna bless him or her. You understand? But what happens is that life comes in between that, that desire. Sometimes the job comes between that desire. Sometimes laziness, the day just flies by like that, right? All of these things happen because you're going through trials and tribulation. You understand? So when you can't do this to the point where you're supposed to do it, that's all right, brothers and sisters. Just try your best the next time. You understand? And if anybody tells you that anything other than what I just said, they're not reading. They're not reading the word. They're not um, like it says in Matthew 9:13. They're not seeking mercy. You understand? Because when it's, when the coin is flipped and it's them now, what do they want? Mercy. Mercy. They want mercy. But some people won't give you mercy, yeah. but they want mercy. You understand? So, um, just remember who you're dealing with, man. You're not dealing with a man. You're dealing with the Most High. Yeah. I'm going to read something to you. This is Romans chapter 7, verse 14. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual. You're a spirit in a body, right? So you and the law are alike. Guess who else is alike? The Most High, who is a spirit. But for you to be like unto the Most High, like I said in the beginning, let us make man in our image, you have to keep the law. Because not only do you look like him, now you behave like him. Everybody understand that? So it says, Romans seven fourteen again, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. That's your challenge. That's the reason why you get lazy and won't make preparations for the Shabbat day, or you will do things on the Shabbat day, because you're still stubborn. That's what that means. I am carnal, sold on the sin, right? So you have to be careful, Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy. This is Romans 7, 12, read it, listen to it. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. And who was saying that? This is Paul writing to the Romans. This is not Moses writing to the Israelites way back then. This is Paul writing to the Romans in his time, after Christ or Yahweh Shai had risen into the heavens. Everybody understand that? Uh -huh. They always want to talk about the law ain't no good, it's done away with, we can't do it anyway. No, Paul is saying what? Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Everybody understand? Was, was he speaking to the children of Israel who was in war? Yes, sir. Yes, he were. The letters to the Romans are to the Roman Israelites, okay? And um, Paul himself said he was a Roman. He was a Roman citizen, okay? So it's important that we understand that when we're reading Romans or Ephesians or Galatians or Corinthians, these are the Israelites that were in these areas, the so-called Gentiles, okay? But they were not Gentiles necessarily of the flesh. They were Gentiles of the mind. The Gentiles of the flesh were the natural Gentiles, like the children of Ham, or you know, the, you know Japheth, right? Um, What's that? Romans seven and eleven. That was Romans seven and twelve, and Romans seven and fourteen. And I'm going to leave it right there, you know. And as 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 um, as I teach, and I bring out the word of the Most High by the Spirit of the Most High, it's like a two-edged sword. It cuts you. You understand? So. You get cut, I get cut, you bleed a little, I bleed a little. Because I remember, damn, why did I do that again? <laughs> right? But that's the way it's supposed to work. Because then next time I'm going to do better. Next time we all do better. Yeah. Okay? And the Most High in, in seeing and knowing our hearts, who reads the reins of our hearts, he'll see that we've learned and we want to do better. Okay? Shalom.